In our last video, we talked about how to prep a lighter for the field, but we can take that one step further and we can talk about how do we recover a lighter from the two most common issues that normally make them stop working. So besides the obvious that the lighter is actually broke or it's out of fluid, a lighter will sometimes just stop working. You can't get a flame from it. And it's normally because of one of these two things. First being that it's just too cold and the lighter begins to freeze. Now here in Pennsylvania, it does get cold, but it doesn't get as cold as like Maine or like the Arctic Circle kind of cold, but it does get cold. So the first thing that I do, and I have lighters all over the place outside in buckets and in my yurt and stuff, and it, it gets way below freezing, is we just take the lighter like this and we get Give it some breaths right down. Imagine that you're trying to fog up the window at your parents' house to write a little note on. So um, we're gonna breathe right down inside. Normally there's enough heat when we do that from our breath to thaw out the top section or I, when I say that I more mean like warm it up and that's gonna get your flame going. If you're in a way colder environment though and that does not work, just simply take your lighter and put it under your base layer. Now what that's gonna do in just a few minutes is warm up that lighter and it's gonna give you the flame that you need. So if you know you're going into a very cold environment, just keep the lighter up close to you and you'll be fine. Now the second reason that we would need to recover a lighter is because it gets wet. It either falls in a puddle, you lay it on the ground, it just gets too much moisture, it falls in the snow, or maybe even like walk through a stream and don't realize it's in your pocket, fall through the ice, flip a canoe, and, it, and you get it, We get it gets wet. So now if you watch our last video, you know we already re removed that child safety mechanism on here. And that's very important that that's done. That child safety mechanism is gonna trap snow or moisture in there and we need to be able to dry that out. But before we actually recover this, you need to understand how a lighter works and that's gonna make your life of recovering it that much easier. Now simply looking at a lighter, when we depress the back red button, what that does on the front side is spray a small stream of fluid from the reservoir down in the bottom up through inside that little nozzle. So that little nozzle needs to be dry and clean and not filled up with any kind of debris at all. The second part of this mechanism then is the wheel. As the wheel spins, it strikes against the ferro rod. And what that does is it throws a spark. Now when we combine those two things together, we have heat and we have fuel, the oxygen around us gives us an open flame and that's how a lighter actually works. So once the lighter gets wet, we need to be able to troubleshoot and fix those two issues that we have. So fuel and heat. lighter fresh out of the little stream that is running here. So we have a couple things going on. First, it is gonna be totally wet. So if we can just shake the lighter like this, what that's gonna do is it's going to get some of that water out of there. First thing that we wanna address is that fuel port that we talked about. So to clean that out and get that little bit of water there, all that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our breath, and we're gonna blow across that. We have enough pressure with our breath when we do that to blow those water droplets out of there. I also like to tell individuals to blow against that wheel. Spin the wheel a little bit and blow. That's gonna get any of that heavier water off of all of these mechanisms. Now the next thing that we need to do is actually dry this little wheel. Remember that wheel is scraping against the ferro rod, so we need to remove any moisture from that. Now there's two schools of thought so when it comes to drying out that wheel and that ferro rod in order to throw a spark. First being that we just very violently rub this wheel back and forth on our pans. What this is going to do is create a lot of friction. The friction in turn in is gonna dry off that wheel and ultimately get us back to throwing a spark. The downfall that some people have with this though is that they feel you're gonna wear out that ferro rod on the inside, that little flint striker, or the wheel itself. I personally have never had this happen, so that is my preferred method. I really, I don't think I'm gonna wear that thing out. But if that is a concern of yours, you can always take this wheel and then very gently, without making a lot of sparks, run this along the seam of a piece of cotton pan or shirt. That's gonna dry it out just as well, and it's gonna give you that spark that you're going to need. And there you have it. We again have some flame from the lighter that was just laying in a small little stream. So, easy, quick way to get your lighter up and running again. Again, cold weather, keep it against you. Wet weather, you're gonna have to run yourself through that technique in order to get this thing dried out. Cold, wet weather, just play back and forth with them. But it's very viable to be able to get these things up and running again. So prep it right, learn how to recover it, and then you, 
can make fire whenever you need with an open flame source. It just makes life that much easier. But don't forget to practice with your ferro rod, flint and steel, and all that other stuff. Um, and I think you should be good. So this was Dan Wolak with my yellow Bic lighter out here in the woods. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. As always, check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Until next video, stay in the woods.